Our body is close to 20% protein, and many of the foods we eat also contain protein. Amino acids are the building blocks of proteins. Amino acids link together to form polypeptide chains. And proteins are typically very large molecules made up of one or more polypeptide chain. Here we'll look at how amino acids link together to form polypeptide chains. And how polypeptide chains break apart into their building blocks, amino acids. The general formula for an amino acid can be depicted as a molecule like this. All amino acids have an amino group, which is NH2, and a carboxyl group, which is COOH. This can also be called the carboxylic acid group. It is the amino group and the carboxylic acid group that gives these compounds the name amino acids. The R group in this general formula represents various side chains that can be attached to the central carbon atom. There are 21 amino acids used in our body, which means there are 21 different side chains that can be represented by R. If we replace the symbol R by a single hydrogen atom, we get the simplest amino acid, which is called glycine. If we replace the symbol R by a methyl group, CH3, we get the amino acid, which is called alanine. Replacing R with this group, gives us the amino acid called valine. Some contain the element sulfur, like this one, giving us the amino acid called methionine. Some contain a benzene ring or phenyl group, like this one, giving us the amino acid phenylalanine. Using a biology textbook or searching on the internet, you can find tables that show you the structures for all 21 amino acids. Here we have two amino acids beside each other. We have used the letter R to represent any of the 21 possible side chains. One of the H atoms on the amino group of the amino acid and the OH from the carboxyl group on a neighboring amino acid can be removed in a dehydration synthesis. This releases a water molecule and the two amino acids bond together to form a larger molecule made up of two amino acids. This is called a dipeptide. The new bond that forms between the carbon with the oxygen on one amino acid and the nitrogen atom on the other amino acid is called a peptide bond. In a new dehydration synthesis, another amino acid bonds to the dipeptide to form a larger peptide chain. Dehydration synthesis can continue and the peptide chain continues to grow while water molecules are released. A large number of amino acids bonded together form a polypeptide chain. Polypeptide chains can get very large and can contain hundreds or even thousands of amino acids. Proteins are made up of one or more polypeptide chains. Proteins are synthesized in the ribosomes found in our cells and in the cells of other animals, and they're also made by plants. 12 of the 21 amino acids humans require can normally be made in our cells, with some exceptions. These are called non-essential amino acids because we don't need to get them from the foods we eat. Nine of the amino acids required cannot be synthesized by our body. These are called essential amino acids because we must get these from the foods we eat. To get essential amino acids into our bloodstream, we first need to digest proteins in the foods that we eat. In our digestive system, when appropriate enzymes are present, polypeptide chains in these proteins break apart into smaller peptide molecules and eventually into amino acids. Here is a small polypeptide chain. If we add a water molecule to this in the presence of the correct enzyme, a hydrolysis reaction will take place, and an amino acid will be removed from the chain like this. Another water molecule can be added in the process of hydrolysis, releasing another free amino acid. 
As more water molecules are added to this peptide chain, hydrolysis eventually breaks it down into single amino acids. To review, we've seen how amino acids link together to form polypeptide chains using the process of dehydration synthesis. And that proteins are very large molecules made up of one or more polypeptide chains. Proteins in the foods we consume are made up of polypeptide chains. Polypeptide chains in these proteins break apart into smaller peptide molecules and eventually into amino acids using the process of hydrolysis. Mm -hmm.